My name is Kevin from Metal Shop. Ian here from Metal Shop. Michael Ackerfeld from Opeth. They're going to be playing tonight at Showbox Soto with Catatonia. Now, your new album, Heritage, released last month on Roadrunner Records. Uh, kind of a departure from the more heavy sound of Opeth. Obviously, we've seen that coming for a long time. But what has the reaction been like for these new songs live? Uh, live has been good. Uh, we, we, we started uh, playing... Uh, the first show was like a day or two before the release of the album over here so when we played those songs it was like no reactions right. yeah. like when we introduced the song but gradually as we we, we continued playing on this tour peop the, the reaction has been really really good to, to those new songs and almost ecstatic to some of them which, awesome. I, which I really like you know uh, so everything seems to be fine I mean from what I heard, like online, it's a, it's a it's a whole different story. Like okay. Lots of people complaining. Everyone has their opinions online, right? Yeah, that's fine. You know, I'm, I'm, I mean, that's how it is. But uh, you know, in in reality, like uh, when we play, and you know, the people come up talking to me after the show, and everybody's happy. So <clears throat> now, in the new Terrorizer, um, you're quoted as saying that with Heritage, uh, you feel like you've been kind of liberated from the shackles of metal. Uh, did you, have, you know, have you ever felt confined by the limitations of the metal genre? No, it's something, you know, when you, when you read something like that, it's, you know, it's, it's different from when I, right. when the way I, it's a how context. I said it, you know, <laughs> exactly. it's meant as a bit of a fun thing, you know, but, uh, no, I never felt that we, uh, we've been, you know, like, uh, I mean, restricted within the metal genre, but I, on the contrary, I always felt that I wanted to expand the boundaries right. of metal a little bit. Uh, at least for our own type of metal music, whatever. Um, but it, it's it's a different metal scene today. I don't really feel uh, that that we belong to today's metal scene as much as maybe we did some time ago. Uh, now I feel like the the type of metal that I like and the thing the type of metal that I think is real metal is the 80s, 70s okay. metal. The classics. Yeah, and uh, it's. Uh, I mean, I just can't. It's difficult for me to, to get excited about contemporary metal for some reason. I don't really go looking, so I don't really know what's out there. But when people, you know, like I get a new record or something like that, and it just doesn't click with me in the way that it did before. Uh, so I'm, I'm definitely, I'm just in a different, you know, frame of mind right now. I'm looking for, for other forms of music. And in reality, like when I've been writing my own songs, you know, like the whatever, Opeth songs right. or whatever, I never really listened much to contemporary metal bands. Even if we belonged to that scene in the early days, like with the first record, there were bands like from the Scandinavian scene, like Emperor and stuff like that, that I liked, but I never drew inspiration from those bands. It was always older music, you know. Uh, and with the new album, it feels a bit like I'm finally actually writing stuff that's a bit closer to the music that I listen to. On so a daily basis. Would you say you're kind of writing the music that you would like to hear from modern bands? It's, it's always been like that, and I'm, you know, in no way like do I am I turning my back on metal music as a, as a genre. Exactly. I love metal, but that's also as a you know like that that's one of the reasons why I feel I I uh, get angry with the metal scene or upset that it's not doesn't have anything more to offer to me. Um, so I'm just right now I'm just in a different place. Um, now, about the songwriting process, was there ever a really outright conscious effort to avoid the more heavy parts, or is it just something that happened naturally? Yeah, it happened naturally. I did write a couple of songs like a continuation of the Watershed record. Mm -hmm. uh, I had some idea that I wanted like three-part harmony vocals all the time, Yeah, you know, um, because th there's three singers in the band. And um, but I just didn't like you know it didn't sound you know it wasn't I didn't feel it you know it wasn't heritage no so I scrapped those songs and started from from scratch again and came up with with the real stuff that I wanted to hear you know that's always been the case for Opeth and sometimes you have a couple of records that kind of connected you know they I don't like I, I like to think that they don't sound the same but they belong together if you know what I mean. Uh, but this is definitely a departure from, from that. I felt that I was done with a particular style, the style that, that say, Ghost Rivers in Watershed, and wanted to do something else. 
Um, so With the departure, you can call it a rebirth as well. Though. Yeah, I mean, this is the tenth record now. We've been around for twenty-one years, and it feels good for me that that uh, we have an album that I want to, you know, that I want to hear. You know, that the other guys want to hear. Everybody's like, people are saying, oh, it's not the, you know, it's not the the, it's not Opeth anymore. It's not it's Michael solo. Where's the growl? Exactly. You know, it seems to be so important for for people, uh, which is fine. You know, I'm not going to point fingers, but. This is what we want to do. It's not what just I want to do. It's what we want to do as a collective. Are there any like other particular influences that you'd like to point out that you drew influences, like places that you got your ideas from, or like helped you develop the, this latest record? Yeah, there's some. You know, like Swedish folk music. I've been, listen I've been listening a lot more to lately, do it f even for the last record too. Uh, not maybe pure folk music. I was always been to the rock type of right, style, like rock interpretations right. of folk music. So th I listen a lot to that, and um, also so lots of singers, so like stuff I've been listening to for for ages, like Joni Mitchell and right, Nick okay. Drake and those kind of singer cool. songwriter type of things. Some jazz, some fusion, you know, like the the more interesting Miles Davis record in the late '60s when he played with, I mean, McLaughlin and those kind of guys. Uh, I've been listening quite a lot to. Um, but then I was, I was listening a lot to hard rock, lots of Judas Priest, cool. Alice Cooper, uh, Rainbow, like Judas Priest, Sin After Sin. That was, I mean, I go for what I call old man's walk every day when I'm back home. Just go out for it, like in the evening when the kids are sleeping, go out for, for an hour, just listening to music. And I always come back to Sin After Sin by Judas Priest. And it has also one of the productions, I really, it's such a nice sounding record. Yeah great songs um, and something I just go back with and I've been listening to this record for all my life and still to this day I just like wow it's just it's everything you know same with Rainbow Rainbow Rising and the first Rainbow record what, a, what do you think about Judas Priest uh, calling it quits uh, well I'm not sure if they're gonna yeah, call that's, it quits that's, that's, that's the question <laughs> yeah <laughs> No, they, they are, I mean, they are still my favorite band. We play, play with them a couple of times during the summer now, in festivals and Absolutely. stuff like that. I saw their show, and uh, I mean, I can still, I'm still that, like, 10-year-old uh, kid when I see yeah. them. It's just like, wow, you know. Yeah. Uh, I love them, and they are, yeah, I get starstruck when I see them. Uh, KK Downing come knocking out our door once, you know, like, addressing it. I just want to say hi. And we're like... Hi. Yeah. <laughs> so it's crazy. You want to say hi to me? Yeah, exactly. I was like, you must be, you know, you're knocking the wrong door. But I'm still such a big fan of those kind of bands, you know, and um, still love them, and, I, and they're still delivering. My day job is I work at a record store, and so I was watching some interviews of you talking about all the records that you get and how you were on a first name basis with your postal service worker because of all of the immense amount of records that you get on a daily basis. What is your prized possession as far as vinyl? Well, I have many, you know. Um, it, it, some of the records that I, that I value the most are also records that are high-value records, like collector's pieces, you know. But uh, I would have to say one of the most important and uh, personally kind of gratifying records that I have purchased in the last, in before, you know, is uh, Nick Drake record. Okay. His second album, Brighter Light, which I have on original, and it's an absolute mint condition. Nice. And I love him, and I love records, of course, and I want the first pressing originals. But this record is also one of the, like, it, it was playing in the hospital as my wife was giving birth to both my daughters. So it's a very personal record for that matter. But we read that you mentioned that your former keyboardist, uh, you know, pair, uh, were not contributing much to the latest record. You want to tell us more about the reason why... You know, you guys parted ways, or um, and and how did the songwriting process go uh, after that? Well, I wrote everything without like I had him. I gave him demos of the, the as I was progressing with the songwriting to everybody in the band, right. and the other guys were more like, oh, that's really, you know, I really love this song, this part. I can do this with the drums and just thinking about how we're gonna record it and stuff right. like that. But he never really said anything about the songs or anything. Uh, and uh, I can't really say what happened to be honest because he was just gradually deteriorating and just you know wanted to spend more time on his own and right. um, 
it wasn't that we weren't getting along or anything. It was just that he was just completely uninterested in the band, gotcha. and he showed that very clearly. You know, like because we like for interviews like this, for instance. You know, w there's so much sometimes, and I don't want to do all of them. Right. I want it to be. You know, yeah. and it's like, Perry, can you do this interview? It's like, well, I'm not in the band. You could say like, well, I mean, what you do you mean? Just kind of opt out of it. Yeah. So it felt a bit like, I mean, like he never really wanted to be here. Like if maybe just a, a gig, like a job for gotcha. him. But when he was doing his other projects, <coughs> like Spiritual Beggars, or even when he's just playing on an Arch Enemy record, he was really into it, talking right. about it and that kind of stuff. And that hurt not just me, but the, the, all the other guys. I think that he was just not interested. Uh, and he actually left once before the 20 year, 20 year anniversary that we did, the, the couple of shows. Uh, but we talked him into staying and we made some changes in the whole kind of open operation yeah, yeah just to make every him and everybody really feel better and this record was also a bit you know not I wouldn't say compromise but we we were talking about the the recording process of this record and the music on, on this album that it's going to fit him as well because it's a lot of vintage keyboards right. the Hammond organs and the Mellotrons and stuff like that that we figured he would like and we also recorded it in a way that is more kind of earthy and more live right, type yeah. of uh, but now he, he just um, he's mine he's just somewhere else and it got to a point where it was really irritating for us and frustrating in the studio actually so yeah. a couple of days after the album was uh, was was done uh, we, we I fired him you know yeah. he's got to carry on well, I think he's. I mean, he's. He was coming, you know. He he would have left anyway. So ah, okay. it's not a it's not a big deal. But I can't really say what what happened because I don't really know myself. Just one of those things. Yeah. And uh, if you're looking at the Heritage album, his head is the one that is falling off of the tree. Yeah, he wasn't too happy about that apparently. But uh, like, I don't know. We we I didn't know how we could solve this idea because I wanted the band to be on the cover in in some way, and our heads in the tree of course and Parry is on the record he's not in the band anymore so he's falling down <laughs> to the pile of skulls you know but I mean it's tongue in cheek you know I think it's funny you know but he, he wasn't over amused with, with it but uh, I don't think he's not one of those guys who really cares about those kind of things Fair enough. Now with uh, Heritage, you know, bringing life to new s sound for Opeth, um, with the war doors wide open as far as limitations go, where do you see Opeth going in, you know, five, even ten years from now? Well, I'm not sure if we're going to be around for that long, but okay. you, you never like each. At this point, we've been doing it for such a long time that each new album is like the last record until, you know, we have a new record. Yeah. If you know <laughs> what I mean. Uh, so uh, I don't really know, but I like to keep it open, and I also like the fact that we have changed uh, so so much during our career or whatever that it feels like I don't really know like the fans don't know what's coming if we do another album they won't know what's coming and I don't even know so it's it's fun and kind of liberating to to be in that place where we can just if it's like we can do anything that's been our goal ever since I was you know teenager pretty much to to be playing music uh, that you know is completely without a boundary, so to speak. Yeah, no expectations. If it's going to be the last one, then it's just the next one's just going to be a pleasant surprise. Yeah, exactly. You know, we, you know, I don't have goals anymore, and I don't know if I ever had goals. It's just like all of a sudden you find yourself in a band and you're doing things and you know you you're working and that kind of stuff. And when it comes to musical goals, I don't really have any. When it comes to like touring goals, I don't really yeah. have. I don't have any goals. I'm just. So you've worked with Steven Wilson from Porcupine Tree uh, on this record and albums past. Um, uh, tell us a little bit more about uh, Storm Corrosion, uh, the, the collaborative record you guys are putting together. Yeah, it's done now. It's okay. got si six songs. Um, I think it's just going to be called Storm Corrosion. Probably going to be a big f***ing sticker saying it's, it's us who's playing. Is that the band name? Storm Corrosion is the band name, okay, yeah. Okay, cool. And the name of the record, I cool. think. Um, and uh, yeah, it's. I mean, the musically, it's it's it bears little resemblance to anything that we've done with our respective bands. I think you can hear like when Steve's singing. Of course, maybe you think it sounds like Porcupine Tree, and when I'm singing, maybe it sounds like whatever. Right. 
Uh, but both of us are singing, it's little to no drums. There's some drum, you know, it's like effects on there okay. and keeping the beat or whatever. Um, very cinematic sounding. It's quite beautiful, I think. For me personally, I would say it's the most beautiful types of music I've ever been in involved with. Cool. And uh, it's also kind of ugly sometimes. And long songs, um, no singles. Record label definitely is going to say it. <laughs> no singles. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to tour with this kind of thing okay. because there's like 16 piece string orchestra and like choirs and you know so it is pretty it sounds pretty epic it is epic you know and it's I, I personally I love it you know it's it's something I I love it for many reasons I love the music and I love the fact that that uh, I known Steve for so many years now we've been talking about working together for such a long time that we finally made it you know and it, it's something that we both feel like wow you know it's a, it's a great achievement for for me personally um, and we are talking to a record label right now too. Okay. Still, just gonna put it out. Keep your eyes on that. For sure. Yeah. But it's coming in April. Okay. Next year. April. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Spring. Spring 2012. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. Now, when we mentioned that we were going to be talking to you um, on the Metal Shop Facebook, we got a couple interesting questions. One I chose was um, Elizabeth on Facebook wants to know uh, which lullabies Michael Ackerfeld most loves to sing to his children. I don't really sing to my children too much. You know, when we. When we sing, we, we kind of sing together sometimes, but not like a Christian style sitting, you okay. know. No, we, we sing um, Kiss songs. Nice. They love... Uh, love Gun? Uh, no, not <laughs> Love Gun. They love uh, <laughs> Shout It Out Loud. Okay, all right. That That's song. Awesome. And ACDC, <laughs> Dirty Deeds, Done Dirt Cheap, they love... Nice. They didn't like Queen. They hate Queen. Really? Yeah. Uh, but they love Justin Bieber, but I <laughs> don't know his songs, to be honest. I never you sang a Justin Bieber. Bieber. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Bieber. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Awesome. All right, cool. So we have uh, a couple questions left for you. Uh, second to last one. What's one of your favorite Seattle bands of all time? Since we're here in the Northwest. And all. Well, Queensryche. Okay. I love Queensryche. Queen of the Rock. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't got the... Actually, it was a strange fucking story that happened with, just with Queensryche, because I did... Uh, an interview with uh, I was supposed to do an interview with a Japanese Japanese guitar magazine, okay. and uh, they were going to call at ten o'clock and talk to me. And ten o'clock, the phone rings. I pick it up, and it's like Michael. I was like, yes. Uh, oh, this is from whatever guitar magazine, and yeah, we're going to do it. Are you ready to start the interview? It's like yes. Okay, Michael, um, where are you right now? And I'm like, I'm in I'm in Stockholm. I was at home. And it's like, oh, that's interesting. What are you doing? What are you doing there? Why aren't you in Bellevue, Washington? Uh, yeah. What What are you doing there? And I was like, well, I live here. And she's like, or the guy was like, mm, I, di I didn't know that. And I was like, okay, one of those interviews where yeah, they don't yeah, have a clue. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, okay, well, your new new album, Dedicated to Chaos, is such a great record. And I was like, Dedicated to Chaos. You know, I I thought that it was oh, just like an expression yeah, yeah. expression for like it's a it's a this the new album is chaotic. Album is dedicated yeah. to chaos. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, oh, okay, yeah. No, yeah, it's still outside. Well so, so how did you come up with the title "Dedicated to Chaos"? I'm like, well, uh, it's not called. It's called. Uh, at the time, I didn't know that was the title of the new Queen's Rack. Right? Yeah. Oh, okay. But of course, it was a big mix-up. She's gonna. It, this person's gonna talk to Michael Wilton. Okay. Oh, okay. so it's a little Roadrunner switcheroo or something. Strange. Yeah, yeah. Because it's the same time, same magazine. Both of us called Michael. Michael, yeah. So I wonder who called him. So you should have just done the interview as Guys Queens, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I could have, but I was just like, <laughs> wow, what the f***? It's just a, what are, ch what are the chances? Yeah. Pick a scar on your body, show us if you can, and tell us the story of how you got it. Uh, I don't have many scars. It's not like a lethal weapon that yeah. scene, you know, but this is a little scar. Which I uh, I inflicted on myself, not trying to kill myself, but I was working in this place that sells pla wooden, pla you know, like building material. Okay. And there was this day that um, we didn't have anything to do, and my colleagues at work they taped me up, like sh sh around my body, so I was standing like this, <laughs> and I had my knife up here, you know, so I could, you know, I was going to cut myself loose, and I just, <laughs> and I cut myself in the hand is gushing blood. Shenanigans went too far, Michael. Yeah. I mean, it, it didn't hurt, but it was, I mean, that's my, that's, 
That's really my only scar. I have one here too, somewhere, but I'm not sure if it shows. I was sitting on a on a fence, just sitting. I was a kid, yeah. and my feet got stuck in the fence, and I fell and just <laughs> hit, you know. Got yeah, got a bleeder. Well, that was are definitely some uh, some memorable scars. Opeth, of course, headlining tonight at Showbox Soto. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Opeth Heritage out now in stores on Roadrunner Records. Check them out. You know the drill. Metal Shop. Oh.